So hello. Uh, yeah, David asked me to talk about uh, my product and uh, what we do. The problem is that the product is just one button, so I couldn't do a demo for 30 minutes. So instead of that, I, I want to share some common problems that we find in uh, in data migration projects for Salesforce. How many of you are Salesforce users? I can imagine if you're coming here, you are. And uh, how many of you are administrators? Okay, so the others are business users, right? The sales people. Okay, so <coughs> I would say this is useful for both. So our product is clearly not for administrators. It's for anybody who would like to just get their data from all CRM system into the, into the sales world. Shortly about myself, I'm co-founder of uh, Import2. Uh, it's already the third uh, startup in the data in the data integration space. We did some business analytics about like five years ago, but that was like software development oriented. Last product was cloud integration platform, and right now we're working on Import2. And just some stupid facts. Like, I was crazy enough during the last 10 years to live in five different countries. So I'm here in the US for about a year and working on that project. So shortly, what we are doing is super simple service where you log in into the website, give us credentials for your old CRM, give us credentials for your new CRM, and click the button. And that's all that you need to get the data moved over. And just in six months, we did more than 100 data migrations uh, up to now. Very, very, yeah, so it's like, if you ask anybody if you've done the project in that, it's like super fast, uh, it's like very unknown content up to now. But let me talk about the problems, what we faced, and I imagine a lot of consultants and a lot of people who tried to do that <coughs> at home uh, have fixed. So I think the core problem with data migration today is that it is all based on CSV files. And uh, why is that? Probably for me, the core problem was that I couldn't find a good Excel <laughs> substitution. And, uh, and to, to, uh, when I showed this presentation to my partner, I said, oh, you know, there's Excel for Mac. <laughs> I was like, I, like, I didn't, didn't even think about it, then I can install it. So, okay, but let's talk about serious. <laughs> So first of all, CSV, as, as I understand, it's built by developers for developers. And uh, now when you use cloud systems, um, it's not developers and IT people who are running the game. And uh, you want to have tools and solutions which are actually usable by business people, by sales people, by anybody who is making a decision to pay for that software which they buy in the cloud. So CSV is uh, good enough when it's super simple but it's not working when CEO is trying to move the data from SIBO. Because he just uh, he can't do that himself. So, <coughs> and again, if you are the administrator part, you probably can do it yourself and you can manage that until it's like 100,000 records. But uh, the data is never perfect. And uh, if you're trying to manipulate really big, large CSV files, you realize that the amount of time and work which goes into trying to get this specific record correctly or this specific column, it just gets, uh, yeah, it just gets too much. So, so what it all ends up is that a normal CSV based migration project costs you just like 10k plus and uh, it's always a pain in the ass and it's always like, hard to get it done. Uh, so, but now coming to some specifics about Salesforce implementation specifically. Uh, what do you have to understand? If you want to move data into Salesforce, by default, you can't update system and audit fields. System and audit fields are data like who created the object, when it was created, when it was last modified. So this is something which uh, uh, people get surprised when they hear that. 
But to do that, you have to call customer support. They have to enable that. And only then, you can actually, when you insert the row, you can actually update those fields. So, so how it looks in the reality, you move all your data, start doing the reporting, and then realize, oh, my whole database is created yesterday. And then you have to start again the whole migration project. So, so you don't run into that problem, you know, call Salesforce support, ask them to enable that before you move the data, and you will be covered. Then, if you are, if you're super smart and you use one of those uh, special offers by Salesforce and you jump on the group edition, professional edition, you have to know that most of the data migration tools which are available, they don't work with that. Uh, which again, lots of our customers are super surprised. Like, oh, how come? Like, I was trying to move my data, but there's only context and accounting for it, but I couldn't leave for anything else. Uh, you have to think about that. It's uh, it's the reality. There are like some some tools which are coming out, and Infer2 is one of them. We support all of the versions, but default tools which are provided by Salesforce, they don't work with group edition and professional edition. Uh, one more surprise which comes out, uh, you're paying for Salesforce, you are using that, and when you move the data you realize that, oh, there's a daily limit on the amount of data which you can push into the system. And those limits are, it's like super complex formula, so you can't understand how many data points you actually have unless you like, find it out somewhere and then, uh, or somebody explains you that. But uh, our experience says, if you don't use special tools which follow all the requests together, you will run out of the limits. And it can take you weeks to run, uh, to pull in all the data. So, again, this is one of the things. It's hard to do it at home, so you better use like special tools or special things to make sure that you're not running into that issue. Or you can buy more API limits or upgrade them, which can cost quite a lot. Uh, again, this is probably <coughs> not that everybody needs, but uh, but it comes very often. So if you have set up custom fields in your old database, very often the CSV export which you get from a system, which is the default solution, they either don't include that, or they include that in a way that it's not usable. But if you use custom fields, typically it's the most important data for your company, because you have found the reason to create that field, and it's very important that you also move that over. So there's nothing tricky, you have to just create those custom fields corresponding ones in Salesforce and then do all the mappings, but uh, if you have more than hundreds of those, it can get pretty tricky, you can do mistakes in the names, so there's lots of manual work if you try to do it manually. Uh, this is probably applies to any migration project but uh, what we have found is um, Salesforce allows you to do a lot of smart validation rules. So the first thing what the administrator does is, oh, let me set it up like ideally this time, because last time it failed, so let me do it right now. And when you start moving the data, 80% of your database doesn't, doesn't get through because there are validation rules. So format of phone numbers is not right, and uh, how they move in. <laughs> so one of the things you have to take care of during the migration is making sure that the data, which is in the fields which you're trying to move over, it's exactly in the format which you want to have it in, in a new system. Again, it might be nothing special, but if you have thousands of records and if you're using Excel to manipulate that, it can be pretty tricky. <laughs> and, uh, and this is, I think, actually is the biggest problem for anybody. Okay, you move data in, but how do you test that? And, uh, and there's no solution to that. It's like, uh, we are approaching with our product a bit differently, I'll explain you how, but uh, if you're trying to do that with CSV-based solutions, it's just you have to go through different data sets and like in a year you'll probably find it out, oops, that didn't work. And or oops, I did the wrong mapping here. Should I import again? Or, but it's too late in the year because you have like updated the data set a lot. So making sure that data quality is uh, so 
can say is safe during that stage. It's super hard and um, yeah, and it's like you can do testing, but it's like because the data set is so big, it's very hard. Uh, yeah, so that's overall like most of the points which I wanted to talk about. And um, now just try to explain <coughs> the different approach what we are taking with our solution is, um, as I said, we try to build a product that is actually for end user, it's just one button. And uh, because that's all what you want. You want to have, oh, can I have all my data from this old system moved to this new system? And that, that's, <laughs> that's the big feature of the product and that's the requirement. So why do we want to make complicated Excel products with, just to move the data? So we took totally different assumptions that the whole market is taking. So we are doing API-based uh, data migration instead of trying to do loading data on the spreadsheet level. <coughs> and the way how we ensure the data quality is every time a new customer comes in, He's actually using the data mappings and all those formatting things, what we have done for our previous customers. So the more data migrations we do, easier it becomes for us to assure the quality of your migration because we have run into those issues with our previous customers. Yeah, like our first 10 customers weren't very lucky, so we had to do some <laughs> manual checks and things like that. And yeah, and we had to work 10 times more than we actually charged for that product. But now, when we have done more than 100, and it's like this number is increasing all the time, basically, we, we do it right almost all the time. Because we have seen all those strange cases, strange formatting, and, and it's pretty, pretty good. And uh, yeah, this is what David asked me. So this is our product. OK, I probably increased the size of the button, but, but it's, it's actually big. That's not the website, right? <laughs> so you choose where you're moving from. You choose, like, right now we support the three system. Another three, four system will come supported later this month. You log in into your, let's say, Zobo CRM. Then you log in into your Salesforce account, and just click the button. And uh, the one thing which we do which complicates that is before you pay, we do a sampling for a so to get the book and to understand that this works. So that makes the product two step, <laughs> not one step. But as soon as we looked at the sample, we looked at how everything worked, uh, we initiate the full migration. And yeah, and that, that's all. And probably if anybody here who has done sales of migrations, there's like a small challenge which I wanted to put out. Like if you will be bidding somebody for Salesforce migrations projects, I bet I can do 10 times less expensive. And, uh, and this is just because we have automated all the things which we will be trying to do manually. And if not, I'm buying you a lunch or probably even more. So, yeah, that's. Uh, that's what I want to talk about. And definitely very welcome to answer any questions or if you have problems with data, data importing or anything like that. You're not going to do a live data migration right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> do you have a need to migrate, uh, David? I'm oh, just kidding. <laughs> so how many do you get for free uh, for the trial, Mark? You said that you can try like a sample record mm -hmm. before you buy it. Like hundred or what? Uh, we do twenty five for the records of each type. Okay. So okay. pretty pretty much that you can actually judge the quality, and uh, and small enough so we can actually do it almost real time. You have to be like a brand new. So if I want to move to Salesforce, and if I've already been using Salesforce, I yeah. In our case, the migration product project was. Kind of like trying to fix the plane while it's done. <laughs> we're some of our data in Salesforce. We've got a rep working in Salesforce. We haven't migrated everything to Zoho yet. <laughs> How do you handle that? Is that a problem, or do you prefer that people say, "Don't do anything in Salesforce, import, and then start working"? So we do have some duplicate checks built in into the product. Yeah. Uh, but with the duplicate checks, it's always. Uh, 
somebody changed the email and there are some situations which you just can't guess automatically. Mm -hmm. So I would say 99% of our old customers are typically using the product during the trial stage and not later. But I imagine as soon as we become more popular in the market, then people would think, oh, I have this data in my old system, which I just forgot about mm -hmm. because it was too expensive or too complex to move. Then we might want to do more of this. So you don't back up their data before you import? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. So, um, so there, there are two principles. Like, when we go export the data, everything what we do is readable. There is no way we can actually do something with it here. So there is no reason to back up. And one of the reasons why we've done over that feature because it would feel like, oh, we can actually do something. But you can give us just read-only access, and that would be enough. And in Salesforce, every record which we write into the Salesforce, we can identify that we actually store the IDs what we have written. Mm -hmm. And if you say like, like, get me back to the old stage, we just remove everything what we have written. Oh. And you will get like the same stage as you had before. Okay, so I have a record with a Gmail address. I'm importing this guy's corporate email address. I realize no, no. None of that corporation. If you have Gmail, you can go back like find a time machine. You could say this is what the information was. Uh, like we can go back and everything will be did. Okay. If it was done by salesperson, then then not anymore. So you do have a sense of what the record was before you updated it. Uh, but the, again, as I said, the, this is like this is where it gets tricky. As soon as you start updating, typically yeah. we are just writing the new data. You keep track of all the IDs you're writing into yeah, the system, yeah. so you can take them out. Exactly. But you don't update any record that exists. So when you see that you're looking for dupes, you're never uh, you know, merging records, correct? Uh, yeah, that, that's a trick what we do. We just don't try to get into the beta, but because they, uh, it's already right. You insert. You don't do upsearch or anything. Yeah. Okay. So, right. so, so yeah, that, that helps. Okay. So, so what about what about when I mean, because like at data.com, one of the biggest things in the database is let's say David. It's it's David dot hack at cloudamp.com, and then he decides to go with somebody else, and it becomes d hack at mm -hmm. at cloudamp.com. And so you've got the duplicate information. Do you have anything that goes out and checks for that kind of? Difficult, so, like that kind of level uh, at this stage, our dedupe is like very basic. Okay. So we, when we move the data, like uh, we are trying to see, like, oh, if you're moving something, like the same with the same emails, but we don't do the matching, like you told. But yeah. that's definitely where we are going to improve. Is uh, that that's something what like fifty percent of our customers ask us. Like, can you also clean it up before you actually? Well, yeah, and, and there's the other thing too. Is like I met him and he was an account exec, and now he's a senior vice president of sales. And which one of those records is actually valid versus mm -hmm. you know? So right now, what we suggest to, to do, like <coughs> super good to do, is you move the data and you clean it up with the DDO tools, which are there. Yeah. Or you use DDO tools on your source database, clean it up, and then run the migration. Gotcha. Which can actually decrease the costs of our service because you will have less records and it will be less expensive. Oh, is that the shard by record or unattractive? Uh, we have different packages and we actually answer the pricing. He sees it again. I thought it was free. I didn't ask this time. So, which is actually super important in our case. Again, it's like it doesn't mean that we're doing it wrong. We are. How do I? It's really expensive. It looks like this. It's costing you. End of the book. End of the book. Pricing. End of the book. Pricing. This will cost you. By the way, what's the guess? How much it costs? A buck a record. I'm kidding. I should increase the pricing. Can you imagine them? <laughs> we actually moved the bulk million records already. That's how much information I'm saying. How do I move this? <laughs> this is a good thing. But it's on the web. 64 cents a record. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, it's on the web. Oh, magic. So, it's like cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no brainer. You just, uh, just come to us and we help. Oh. How long does it take? 
Um, sometimes it goes over a couple of days, and typically it's because of the API limits of the source system. Like for example, Soho doesn't allow you to pump more than more than a thousand requests per day. And there's nothing we can do because we are just taking the business away from them. It's like hard to negotiate. <laughs> uh, but if you know those limits, then uh, like premium size, like up to 50,000 <coughs> records, it's like a couple of hours. And there's actually someone who has less API calls than Salesforce. Huh? Uh, so we're competing for the time. <laughs> it's like two cents a record. If I hit it, yeah. You should have the time that it takes yeah. to do that. Well, it that. sounds like it varies by, yeah. by source data, right? Yeah. But, like, our competitors do that in a couple of weeks. And when we do real time demo, people are like, ooh, we better. Shop <laughs> yeah. If I'm shopping for a tool, right, and I see the competitor's tool, and I see your tool, and someone says it takes X amount of weeks, I don't have the time frame here, but I assume it's the same. But if you're going to say, let's say, yeah, up yeah, to X point. amount of hours, or yeah, X amount of days. That's a good point. Should, like, uh, right now, probably the trick what we try to do is uh, just simplify the trial process so much that. There, there's nobody on the market who will say like, oh, you can do it like right now, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's like this. This answer is like ten times more questions than anybody else. Mm -hmm. So probably, but again, we will be improving, and definitely the timing estimations would be a good idea. And and as soon as we've done the sample trial, we can give you a like, super exact estimate. Can I import the data into competitors? <laughs> no, it's still yeah, their credentials. Yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> if you have credentials, <laughs> administrator rights, then you can do anything. But yeah, it's still using credentials. <laughs> and by the way, about the security, as soon as you move the data, uh, and you say like fine, and like this is the second button which you have to click, and we just like clean anything from our database, so there's nobody. So doing migration is it encrypted at all? Um, so we do encrypt all the communication, like the basic stage to pass over the encrypting that. We do encrypt the like certain amount of data points what we store into our database. But during the migration, we actually doesn't store CRM data into our database. So there's nothing to encrypt. And it's another benefit of API-based things. So we just load it from one system, process it, and load it into the new system, and forget it. So, and yeah, and like to move it, you can't encrypt it because you have to write it in an unencrypted way. So there's hard to do like even more secure. But uh, yeah, but because we don't leave any traces, it's good enough. And all the passwords, all the things. You know, so Salesforce is just the only house, so we don't get even the password. But some systems put don't support open authentication. We, we encrypt all the credentials. Okay, any other questions? <coughs> Thank you. Can you give resources to we just did this type of migration today. Which is, again, it seems like it's complex, but in reality, you just did two data migration requests mm -hmm. into the same destination. And it doesn't, like, the only thing you have to do, if you have duplicates, then you have to do this additional checks. Mm -hmm. but, but it doesn't, but it can handle, like, so let's say we've got like, two companies that one buys the other, mm -hmm. and one has one and the other, and then they, like, it handles custom fields and everything else, too. Yeah. And like, the trick is, if you have same custom fields in the Salesforce, we just do it once and uh, we move the data and stuff. I think you're just curious, how did you pick the from? Like, why not in the CP or something? <laughs> so we are, like, well, I said, it's, like a, it's a third startup for us. 
and uh, one of them failed, and one reason it failed, you didn't know what actually building what was useful for users. How we started this company, we built this form without the product, and uh, it was just high rise and sales work. And people clicked it and paid for that, and then we built the product. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we had to do a couple of sleepless nights, but, yeah. but it was super good validation that somebody needs that. And right now, like the next five tools that we're building here, those are coming from actual customers calling us and telling you, oh, we need that. Salesforce, uh, sales reps asking us, oh, if you don't, if you can support because we're having lots of customers moving to that. And what are the? <coughs> can you tell us what these, what your next support? So next we will support Act, NetSuite, Goldmine. We're not sure if it will be easy to do, but definitely on the roadmap. Uh, what was else? Microsoft. Dynamics, but that will not be in this one. It's okay. a bit trickier. And uh, oh, and different Sage, uh, they have three. Like Act was one, Sage, CRM, and Salesforce. Are you ever going to go from Salesforce to elsewhere? Or you... uh, we first focus on this niche, but we will do a product which will move you from anything to anything. There has to be market demand. Yeah. And not just uh, not just CRMs will do anything what you want to migrate emails, uh, contacts, personal data. Um, like surprisingly, huge amount of people come to us with water. Your what? Water. Yeah. There is a bunch of questions on Quora, like how do I move my data from high rise? How do I move my data from sugar? And like our user just uploaded <laughs> our solution because. And, uh, and then the new comments see that this is uploaded solution and they come to us. And a lot of Salesforce partners are using this too, right? Uh, and yeah, and this is something which, because we're a new company, we're just starting with that, but um, we work already with a couple of uh, consultants who like doing that manually before, and they just realized they can still make money on data migrations, but just use our tool instead. Without doing any, so it's like talking talking seriously, uh, like most of the consultants hate this job because like yeah. it's like it's like movers job. Take one box and move it into the new place. They want to do like consulting, and data migration is not consulting. Do you make any sorts of money out of this as a division, or you want to be pure software? We try to do pure software. So we have this enterprise package where we do things which we didn't automate yet. Yeah. But uh, the things you broke that you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> but this uh, like ideally there will be nothing like that, and uh, and there are so many good consultants who can do tricky things which we can't do. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.